So hopefully all of you can see the slides and just let me know if uh, there's any issues throughout uh, as we uh, go through the, the, the talk. Uh, but, uh, and I realized I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, so I'm David Wilcox. I'm the program leader for Fedora uh, at Lyricis. Uh, and uh, just uh, really excited to be able to help organize these um, uh, meetings online where we would normally uh, be meeting in person. Uh, and this is just a, a brief update on what's going on with Fedora uh, at the level of the uh, technology, but also the, um, uh, what's going on, at the, on, the, on the community side of things. Uh, so just in terms of a brief roadmap, what we're working on this year, we, we have a few high level goals. Um, probably the, the top objective, which, which most of you would have uh, heard of, I'm sure, is, is that we, we are working on a 6.0 release of Fedora. And the, and the goal is to get a beta release out at least uh, this year. We're in um, more or less an alpha state right now. Um, but uh, the goal is to get to a kind of a feature complete beta by the end of the year. And I'm not going to say a whole lot about Fedora 6 specifically in this talk. Um, I've said lots in, in previous talks uh, given over the last month or two, but also because uh, Andrew Woods, who's the technical lead for Fedora is going to be giving a, a full talk on Fedora 6 and the Oxford Common file layout tomorrow. So I don't wanna steal any of his thunder. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, refrain from going too uh, deep into the specifics of Fedora 6 and, uh, in this talk. But um, another goal is, is to make sure we're releasing migration tooling for uh, all previous versions of, of Fedora. So uh, certainly starting with three, I don't think we have um, too many folks that are still using version two or, or version one out there in the world. But uh, the focus is to be able to bring anyone who's on version three, four or five uh, forward to version uh, 6.0. Uh, and we're doing a lot of work on that right now. Um, and third, and what I, I'm going to focus on um, for most of this talk is just to um, uh, say a little bit about the uh, grant that we've recently received from the uh, uh, from the IMLS for uh, a, a Fedora uh, migration grant. This is something that uh, we've been planning for a while uh, and is, is quite related to our efforts for releasing Fedora 6 and also making sure that we're uh, bringing the community forward with uh, appropriate uh, uh, tooling. So uh, this grant, as I said, was uh, recently uh, awarded to us. Uh, it's about a $250,000 grant uh, over the course of 18 months um, from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Uh, there's a link and I'll, I'll share these slides after, uh, after I speak with, uh, with everyone so you can uh, follow these links if you like. Uh, you can take a look at the details and the, and the project plan and, and, and those sorts of things. But it, it's about an 18 month grant. Um, and the focus really is on piloting uh, migrations, upgrades, uh, specifically from version uh, Fedora version three to version six. Um, and uh, of course, as I said, we'll, we also will be supporting uh, migrations from uh, four and five. Those are a little bit easier to facilitate, but uh, three has been sort of the major sticking point for a while. And so that's gonna be a, a major focus of this grant work. So in a nutshell, the, the sort of challenge that we're facing, uh, and many of you I think are aware of this, is, is most Fedora installations, we don't know exactly how many, but, but certainly more than half of the known installations uh, out in the world are running uh, an unsupported version of Fedora, so version 3. Point, uh, whatever or, or earlier. Um, and uh, th there's real risks to running unsupported software. Um, so the content of these legacy systems uh, really is at risk just because while there's sort of unofficial support for Fedora 3, there really isn't official support and hasn't been in some time. So there's no kind of security patches or, or bug fixes going out. And, you know, it's running on an older version of, uh, of Java that itself uh, won't be supported for uh, much longer into the future. So there's a lot of good reasons why folks who are running, you know, these earlier versions of Fedora uh, have a lot of interest in, in moving off of this. Um, but what we found, um, you know, as we tried to explore the reasons why folks were, were sort of stuck on this earlier version of Fedora. Um, and this kind of came out of the grant work that we did last year um, with the Designing a Migration Path grant, um, where we investigated this. Um, and, and what we discovered is that there, there are kind of two main factors that were sort of holding everyone up. Um, one was just that uh, migrations, uh, it, particularly from Fedora 3 to Fedora 4 or 5, took a lot of effort, um, just insufficient tooling, insufficient documentation, and, and, and a lot of work that had to go into kind of rethinking metadata mapping and, and data models and those sorts of things. So the, the level of effort required was and still is quite high, 
and uh, the on the other side, there just wasn't a sense that there was a, a enough value in the in the new features that uh, were available in Fedora four and five to justify that effort. So um, that's sort of what we were uh, you know figuring out along the way. Uh, and so the goal of of this grant work really is to address those concerns and um, you know in a sentence to to bring the community forward to a to a modern supported version of Fedora. Right now, that's that's version six, but uh, since we've adopted you know semantic versioning you know over the last couple of years, it really any changes to the software may result in kind of incremental version numbers going forward. So uh, we're not sort of stuck on Fedora six as a kind of brand. This just happens to be the current version of the software. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone's running something current, and and that's really the goal of of uh, of this grant work. So um, there's a few phases, and I'll, I'll describe each of those phases. But um, really, the, the the beginning of this work is is to work with uh, a couple of pilot partners, um, and uh, to to work with them to uh, pilot upgrades, pilot migrations, and develop and test and refine the tools that will allow others in the community uh, to do so. And so the idea here is to produce some documentation, produce some best practices. Uh, and develop a kind of toolkit that we can uh, disseminate and iterate on over the next few months. And, and, and we've allocated some time in the grant for myself and Andrew Woods and Danny Bernstein, um, who are the, the, the technical leads for, the, uh, for Fedora, um, to really be able to invest in this and, and meet with community members to, to help move this work forward. Um, the, the culmination of the grant is intended to be in a, a, a fairly uh, robust um, in-person migration training event, something like a Fedora camp, but focused on training um, for for uh, migrations in particular. Um, whether or not we'll all be able to get on airplanes by the time this is um, happening is, is is still up in the air, but uh, um, we, we'll do some kind of event, whether it's in-person or online. Uh, and so just a little bit more detail about these phases. So, so phase one starts in September. That's, we're doing a little bit of prep work now, but the grant work officially starts uh, next month and runs uh, through to the, to the spring. And the idea here is, is to work with uh, pilot institutions to work through this process, uh, create documentation, create use cases, uh, document kind of the decision points, how decisions are being made and why. Um, work through some of the metadata mapping decisions, which can be some of the most challenging things about migrations and, and, and sort of try to document some best practices and, and provide some advice to the community on, on what works and what doesn't uh, and, and to work towards building this community toolkit. Uh, these are our partners for these uh, for these pilots. So the, the first pilot uh, will be with uh, the University of Virginia um, using one of their collections, which is running uh, a custom interface um, on top of uh, a Fedora 3 repository. Uh, and then quickly following that, we'll be taking some of the lessons learned from the first pilot and, and trying to apply those to the second pilot, uh, which is Whitman College, uh, which is an Islandora institution. Uh, so trying to address a couple of different Fedora use cases, uh, but developing um, some common tools and practices. There will, of course, be some differences. Uh, upgrading a, a custom front end is different than upgrading uh, an Islandora site, but there'll also be some commonalities in terms of metadata decisions and uh, uh, set up an installation and, and uh, just some of the, the, the tools and, and practices that'll be used along the way. Uh, so we're really looking forward to, to working with those institutions and to uh, try to build up some helpful materials for, for the community that we can share out. And then, of course, the idea is to, to work more broadly with, with everyone else that's still running a, a Fedora 3 repository to put these uh, tools and documentation into practice. Uh, and that's really phase two. So June through September of 2021, uh, that's when we're going to be trying to take this toolkit that we developed in the first phase, uh, disseminate it to the community, and, and try to iterate on that, get some feedback uh, from, from others, what's working, what's lacking, um, and, and try to make this as robust and useful as possible. Uh, and so we'll be looking to all of you to help us during this phase, if you have a Fedora 3 repository and you'd like to kind of work through some of this stuff to give these tools a try and, and let us know how we can improve them and, and, uh, and make them better. And along the way, we'll be hosting webinars and community calls and, and lots of different engagement opportunities so, so folks can weigh in on these things. And then, as I said, the, the culmination is intended to be this, this in-person um, training workshop. So we, we've sort of specced out a, a two and a half day agenda for this. Um, and this phase is intended to run from October through February uh, from 2021 to 2022. So somewhere in there would be this, this workshop. Um, and along the way, uh, 
this we'd be developing training materials and, and uh, assembling a, a team of instructors from the community. Um, the event is intended to be free to attend and in fact there's a, a chunk of uh, funding that we've carved out within the grant to uh, pay for folks who, who would like to attend. So we'll try to identify, uh, you know, uh, people that are from under-resourced institutions that wouldn't otherwise be able to attend the event uh, and, and offer some funding so that they can, they can come and join us. Um, that all changes, of course, if we can't do an in-person event. Um, so we'll have to see you know, when, when the time comes, if that's something that we can facilitate or not. Uh, but even if we have to do something online, um, we'll, uh, we'll still put on this event and, and, and make it as useful as possible for uh, the broader community. And of course, there's a large sort of evaluation and feedback mechanism to this uh, entire uh, grant. So, you know, the, even though the pilot phase uh, is ending in, in next spring, we'll still be kind of uh, working with the pilots all throughout the grant to continue to collect feedback on what's working and what isn't so we can continue to improve the, the toolkit that we're developing. Um, as well, anyone who's attending the, the in-person workshop will we'll do a lot of feedback collection there too to see what we can improve. Um, and then, of course, going on to the future, you know, the grant does come to an end after 18 months. Um, fortunately, we have a member supported uh, program. So through Lyricist, we're able to uh, fund uh, staff positions like my own, as well as the tech leads um, through our, our, our membership funding. And, and this is just a, a kind of a snapshot of, a, of the logos of the institutions that um, are, are currently funding us in, uh, in this cycle. Uh, and really want to say thanks to all of these institutions for uh, continuing to support our efforts. Um, this is really the only way we're able to keep staffing the, the program and to make sure that anything we produce through the grant can live on and continue to be uh, supported and, and iterated on after that initial funding period is, uh, uh, has been completed. So um, the membership really is uh, vital to our, our ability to continue building and supporting not just Fedora, but also all these, these other uh, tools that we're uh, uh, producing along the way. So I'll wrap up here and we have a few minutes for questions. There are lots of ways to get involved if you're interested. Uh, we have an updated version of the migration utilities that you can actually run on your Fedora 3 data to convert it to data that is compatible with both Fedora 6 and the Oxford Common File Layout, which um, Andrew's going to talk more about tomorrow. Uh, but the software is in a state where you can do that and actually um, stand up a Fedora on top of this migrated data and see for yourself what it looks like in, in uh, version uh, 6.0. Uh, we have a lot of performance and scale tests that we've developed and documented. And, and so if you have particular use cases for Fedora around performance and scale, um, we'd really appreciate it if you would uh, uh, take a look at these tests and, and uh, run them or identify for us what sort of your benchmarks are so that we can help you run them um, and just validate that Fedora is responding to the needs of the community. Uh, we're running code sprints all throughout the year. So the first month of every, the first week of every month is dedicated to a community code sprint. Uh, and if you're interested in getting involved with any of these, um, you can get in touch with me or you can get in touch with Andrew or Danny. Uh, this is a really great way to sort of learn more about the software and, and uh, help contribute to, uh, uh, to the efforts. Um, and finally, if, you, if uh, you'd like to uh, communicate with us, of course, we have a Slack channel. Uh, there's also mailing lists, uh, which many of you are probably on. Uh, and of course, you can support us by becoming a member if, uh, if, if you're not already a member. So I'll, I'll leave my contact information up here for, uh, for a couple of minutes, but uh, I believe we have a little bit of time uh, between now and the, the start of the next presentation. So um, I'll, I'll just pause and uh, again, you can feel free to unmute if you have a question or if you'd prefer to use the chat, uh, that's fine too. I'll try to keep an eye uh, on the chat here. Um, just to see if anyone has any questions um, about anything I covered or if there's something I didn't cover that you were curious about. I'm, I'm happy to answer those questions too before we uh, move on. Well, I was just going to mention, David, that um, the U of H and our partners, um, I can't even remember when it started, 2018, 2017, um, we did a Bridge to Haiku grant about migrating. So um, if you all have any questions about, you know, we could, we could talk about what we learned from that. Uh, uh, I'll be really interested to kind of see this project unfold. Yeah, thanks for that, Ann. And, and I think um, I'll certainly put that on my list um, and, and 
we should have a conversation about that to see what uh, make sure we're not sort of duplicating efforts or or anything like that that you all have already done um, and as well if others have experiences with this if you've already kind of done some work on a uh, migration and uh, maybe done some metadata mapping work or made some decisions or developed some tools uh, please get in touch. I, you know, again, we're, we're the intent here is not to duplicate efforts that have already been done in the community, and we, we do really want to hear from folks um, and, and try to expand on some of the good work that's already been uh, done in these areas. So, so yeah, thanks for mentioning that, and, and uh, I'd look forward to hearing from anyone that has um, input on this before we sort of uh, kick things off in earnest. Yeah, technologically, I don't know what. I don't think there's much overlap, but uh, we also created some like general guidelines. So it hopefully some of that could be applicable or, or helpful at least. So we can talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's a, a good reminder for, for me to, uh, uh, to reach out. So I'll, I'll certainly do that. Um, I think I'll, I'll stop sharing just so uh, Melissa or Danny, if, if you want to get set up for your talk, you can do that. Um, if there are still any questions, feel free to uh, go ahead and, and uh, uh, put those in the chat or, or speak. But um, uh, since, uh, since you two are next, it might be good to get set up. So I, I do have a question, David, um, and I guess I'll, I'll risk asking it, even though I don't know if, 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 you'll, if it'll be an answerable question at this point. but. <laughs> Um, have you had discussions about the process for the migration, like what the approach is going to be? I know with, with OCFL, it does open up some other possibilities, I think, for how you would handle migration. Um, we did have that existing toolkit for Fedora 4, which was the import-export tools, which was also intended to kind of facilitate that sort of work. And I'm just wondering if you've had any of those initial discussions, if you have an idea how it's going to, like what the approach is gonna be. Yeah, I, I think our intent is to use existing tools in the community and expand on those as needed. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a need to invent something new. So, so you're right, on the Fedora side, there is already a migration utility and there's already an import export tool. And those have actually already been updated to be able to do uh, most of this kind of migration work. I, so the migration utility, that, that one works now. You can use that to convert sort of in place exported Fedora 3 content to Fedora 6 content. Um, if you're running a Fedora 4 or 5 repository, I know the, the tech team has already done some work in the most recent sprint to update the uh, import export tool. And the idea there would be that you do an export from Fedora 4 or 5, and then that data gets converted uh, to uh, a format that's compatible with Fedora 6 and OCFL. So the result is, is basically the same as if you had done kind of an export uh, and a conversion using the, the migration utility. So I, I think the intention is to use those particularly for uh, custom sites. Uh, on the Islandora side, there's already uh, a migration utility that works through Drupal, and that's what we'll probably look at first. Although I know there are others in the community that um, have explored some other methods too. So I, I think whatever we do, the intent is to use as much existing community tooling and, and uh, you know, uh, applications as we possibly can and to only create new stuff if we just absolutely have to. Um, but we'll know a lot more about that. We're having some kickoff meetings next month where we're, we're going to talk more in detail about sort of the, the, the process that we're going to follow and, and, you know, we'll be reporting out to the community as much as possible on sort of the steps along the way. Um, and then certainly if, if others are kind of uh, at a point where you're starting to explore these kinds of migrations, uh, I encourage you to get in touch, even though we will only be working with specifically with two pilots to start, we are going to expand those efforts out. And, and you know, if, if, if we can work, uh, you know, with, with others in the community, I, I think we'd be very interested in that as well. Thank you. 